Can you see my screen? Sure. Okay, let's start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first tutorial of IERG 2051B in the signals and system. My name is Zhe Yuanyang. In today's tutorial, I'm going to review what we learned these two weeks. It's about fundamental signals, signal transformation, and also the complex numbers. Um, my office hours is on Wednesday from 3 o'clock to 4.30 p.m. And I will basically use the Zoom link for the online office. Um, here is the link and meeting ID and password. So uh, I, will simply, I will only open the Zoom link on this time slot. So other time this room may be inactive. For the tutorials, it's on Friday and this time from 10.30 to 11.15. So please stay at the same room as the Friday lectures end. Okay, so, so far as we learned, the signal is a function of time. And later we will learn also that the signal can be a function of frequency, but uh, basically they are the same. They, they also have the, um, the time scaling, the, the shifting and scaling property. The horizontal shift or the signals is reflected in the time variable T plus or minus A. In this figure, our original signal XT is equal to one over two T. And if we want to get um, xt equal to half t minus two square, we can simply shift this xt um, with two unit to the right. And also if uh, we want to get uh, half t plus two over two, we will shift left. Uh, sorry, Zhou Yuan. Okay. It seems your screen is frozen. Uh, I didn't see it uh, change. It's, you didn't see the change? So it didn't. I'm not sure what's the student's view. Uh, can, can the screen change? On, on it stay on the first page of the slide. Sorry, mm -hmm. I use the full screen mode, so maybe I need to resume this. Right. Is it, I cannot use the full screen, full, full mode? Uh, it depends on the display setting, but uh, in the worst case, perhaps just use the regular mode, yeah. How about mm. now? Can you see the change? Yes, yes. Okay, so I, I will skip the first two slides. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, so here, um, as we see, the, the signal is a function of time. Um, our original uh, signal xt is uh, half, t, half t. And if we want to get um, xt equals to half t minus two square, we will simply shift two units of xt to the right. And if we want to get half t plus two square, we will shift shift the original xt to the left with two units. Um, and next is the time scaling. And the expan expansion compression of signals is reflected in the time variable beta t. Again, our original xt is the same signal. If we want to get um, half 2t square, and here beta is equal to two, is larger than one, then we compress it in two times. So that uh, you can check when the original t is equal to one and xt is equal to half. So now for the red curve, um, when t is equal to 0.5, it will have the same value when 
uh, as the original xt when it is equal to one. So when beta is larger than one, we will have the compression of the original signal. Um, if beta is between zero and one, we will have the expansion of the xt. Here, um, now the beta is to equal to half. We will expand it to two times. So now, when, when t is equal to two, it will have the same value um, as xt when t equals to one. So um, this is the idea of time scaling and the uh, expansion and compression of the signals. So now we will see a case of the signal transformation. We want to change, uh, change the xt to x minus beta t plus a. Our original signal is the blue curve xt here. Um, so first, we shift it uh, left by alpha. Now we get xt plus alpha, which is the red curve here. And then if beta is larger than one, we compress it and we'll get the green curve, green curve. And then we, we got this minus, we reflect it over y axis. And later we will see for the even signals, if we reflect it, reflect it, it will be the same as the original um, function. And so we have the same curve, no matter this minus sign or, um, or it is positive beta because it, it is an even signal. Yeah, so um, xt equals to half t square, it is a even signal. And for continuous, it has the, this property, xt is equals to x minus t. And you can see, see it in the picture. And it is simple uh, reflection over the y-axis. It's like the, the y-axis is a mirror, so you can simply flip it. For the discrete signal, um, it is the same. The xn will equal to x minus n. Another um, kind of signal is the odd signals. Um, here, the red curve, xt is equal to uh, one over four t cubed. Um, it is a, an odd signal. It has the property xt is equal to minus x minus t. So it is, um, say, reflected through the origin zero. For, and also the same for discrete signals, we also have this odd property. If the xn is equal to minus x minus n. So here we introduce the even and the odd signals. So next we'll see the periodic signals. For the above picture, it's, it is um, two, two times of uh, periodic signals in continuous time scale. So the red is a, it is a sine waveform and the blue one is the rectangular waveform. And notice that the period is the minimum, minimum time that um, each basic, basic form can repeat. And for conven convention, we will say that the period is a positive time. So if we, if the, if we say the uh, period is two, two seconds and uh, we will have um, xt equals to xt plus two and the period t is equal to two. 
So let's see the following two figures. Um, can you tell the difference? So um, can anybody tell me the period of these signals? So the first one we can see it, its period is um, 12 or let, let me see. So forget about this two, four, six and each, each point is stand for one and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So its period is ten. But actually, for the second one, it is an aperiodic signal. That means it is not periodic, because we can see that for although it's very similar to a sine form, but after a certain time it cannot match with um, the previous point. So we don't have some x t plus capital T equals to x t, x n. And we don't have x n plus some period t equals to x, x n. So it is an aperiodic signal. So here we, we, sh we will show the uni step and uni impulse functions in continuous time and also the discrete time. Um, for continuous time, the uni step is uh, in this form. Um, when t is larger than one, the value is equal to one. When t is smaller than zero, sorry, um, when t is smaller than zero, the value is, ze is zero. And notice that when t is equal to zero, the value is undefined. So it can either be one or zero, but we, we don't mind this. Um, so uh, it's also the same for the discrete discrete time. Um, the unit step uh, for n is larger than one, it, it is, the value will be one. When n is less than zero, the, the value un will be zero. But here we, we have the definition of um, u zero is also equal to one. For the uh, unit impulse, in continuous time, we will have delta t. Uh, it looks like this. We use an arrow to represent the delta t because the value of delta t at zero is not one. It is the integral of delta t is equal to one. Actually, the delta t here is, uh, uh, is positive infinite. So we use this un uh, impulse to represent the unit impulse um, function in continuous time. For the discrete time, the unit impulse delta n is simply equal to one. So next we will um, review on the complex numbers. The definition of the complex numbers they in the complex set we denote it as kept this C. A complex number is the number of the form that is equal to A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers, but they, BI is the complex number and Z equal to A plus BI it, it is also a complex number. And I will satisfy I square is equal to minus one. Both i and minus i are square roots of minus one. That means the i square is equal to minus one and also the minus i square is equal to minus one. And we can plot the, plot the a plus bi in, in this picture um, where 
we have the real axis and the imaginary axis. It very, it's very similar to the X, Y, 2D coordinate, um, coordinates. Um, instead of the normal form, we can also represent a complex number in polar form. Say, um, in polar form, we, we need to also two variables to define. So we, in the normal form, we have A and B to define a complex number. Here are two variables. And in the polar form, we also need two variables. The first one is R. The R is the modulus, or we also call it the absolute value of Z. Z. And it is equal to the square root of square, square A plus the plus B square. And the theta, we call it argument, and we can also call it face. It's this theta in this picture. And we can see that R times cosine theta is equal to A, and R times sine theta is equal to B. So now we have two representations for one complex number. Sorry, I, this is the wrong slide. So we have a small exercise. I, I want you to plot, plot out this complex, uh, the following complex numbers. We will have the normal form of four minus three i and also the minus square root three minus i. And also in the polar form, uh, the first one is three square two and the angle is pi over four. The second one is the, um, the modulus is two and the angle is two pi over three. Um, you'll have two minutes to try this exercise. Notice that I use a uh, radian here, but if you want to use degree to represent the angle, you, you, you need a, a round circle at the right, the top right. So pi O4 is 45 degrees and 2 pi over 3 is 120 degrees. Okay, so um, for the normal form, it's very similar to plot a point in 2D coordinates with the uh, real axis we, uh, we, we have four unit and the imaginary axis we have minus three unit. Um, it is similar for the second one. But for the polar form, you may, uh, you may can, you can first transform it to the normal form. So um, 
if the angle is pi o four, we can uh, transform it using the cosine theta plus i sine theta, and then um, we have cosine pi over four is equal to sine pi over four, and is equal to square two over two, and we multiply them, we will get this value. It's three plus three i, and we use the same matrix to plot it. Similarly, for the two angle two pi over three, um, we'll have the cosine theta equal to minus one half, and sine two pi over three will equal to square three over two, and we we get its. Um, normal form in this case. And then we can plot it in this figure. So for the um, normal case, 4 minus 3i is the red arrow. For the um, minus 1 plus square 3i, oh sorry, for the minus square 3 minus i is the green, green 1. And for the uh, polar form, the above two are the polar form. Um, in the case we, we transform the polar form to the normal form, so then we transform it to 3 plus 3i. So another way to plot, um, plot this arrow is that you rotate pi over 4, the angle. Pi o, pi o, o 4. And then you plot this arrow with its radius 3 square 2. You have the same result. And for this one, you rotate from the real axis um, in this dimension. It will be for the counter, counter time rotation uh, 2 pi over 3. And then the modulus is 2 you'll have the same result here. So here is the plotting of the complex number. Yeah, so the uh, next we will introduce the very important Euler's formula. Um, e to the powers i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine theta. Reversely, we have the normal complex number A plus BI, and the polar representation are the modulus and also the angle theta. Um, and it is equal to R times e to the power I theta. Notice that for R angle theta, we, we do not say R times the angle theta. So it, it, simple, it is a representation, but not multiplication. But for r times e to the power theta, it is the multiplication. And also we, we notice that the modulus is equal to the square root of a square plus b square, and the theta is the argument of a plus b i. And we can obtain another formula called the Moivre formula from Euler's formula. It's saying that the um, exponential of cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power n, it is equal to cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. And we can prove it, it it's not difficult. Um, first, from Euler's formula, uh, we notice that the inner part is equal to e to the i to the power i theta, and then to the power n. And we then use the multiplicative property of the exponential function. We denote it as e to the power i, but now the inner is the product of n and theta. So then we refer back to the Euler's formula. 
and now we replace this theta with n theta. So it's now equal to cosine n theta plus i times sine n theta. Now let's see the complex exponential signals for the continuous time, for continuous time. So the left picture showed the, um, we want, if we want to get the exponential signal e to the power i phi, it is equal to cosine phi plus i sine phi. But now the phi is changed over time. So um, the amplitude of e to the power i phi, the modulus, is equal to one. Um, we can also see here, because the cosine to the power two phi plus sine to the power two phi is equal to one. So it, it is a unicircle in the imaginary and the real coordinate. And if we change the phi, we simply rotate here, rotate the phi. So this arrow will um, rotate in the counter time direction. And also if the amplitude of um, our function is changed, now our function is e to the power j, but now we not only change the phase phi over time, but we also change the modulus over time and we will have this spiral-like um, function. Uh, for also, we want to investigate the period of this um, complex, these complex exponential signals. Um, for it is only uh, periodic when when the uh, modulus is a constant. Because from this figure, the left side, if we rotate phi to two pi, it will go to the same, the same arrow uh, and with the, the same real part and imaginary part. However, when the amplitude or the modulus uh, also change over time, when we rotate two pi, we will not get the same, the same value because now my modulus is changed. So uh, we, we will only have the uh, signal is periodic when the modulus is a constant, we denote as the absolute C. And the fundamental period of xt equal to C to, uh, times e to the power i omega t plus phi is equal to two pi over omega. Um, you can justify it um, by checking x t plus two pi over omega. And we plot, uh, plot t plus two pi omega to replace the t here. And then we will have omega t plus two pi plus phi. Uh, and for two pi, we simply rotate one round and it will uh, go, go back to the same result. So it, it is the fundamental period. How, however, for the discrete time series, it, it follows that the period it, the discrete time signal is periodic with period two pi m divided by omega. If there exists some um, m, positive integer m, such that the two pi m divided by omega, it is also an integer. Otherwise, um, the signal will be aperiodic. Um, you can also plot a uh, plug two pi m t plus two pi m over omega n uh, to replace this n, and then we will have 
um, c e to the power i omega n plus phi plus 2 pi m. So if our 2 pi m, the m is not an integer, it will not be a uh, periodic signal. So um, for The, the, this property of the complex exponential um, signals, we can also refer it back to the real signal sign is the, basically the syn sinusoid. Um, if the xt is equal to c sine omega t plus phi, so it, it will be, uh, it is a periodic and the period is two pi over uh, omega. Also, the um, for the discrete sinusoid sine omega n plus phi, and it, it is similar that it will be periodic if two pi m divided by omega. Um, there exists a positive integer m such that we did our period is it is also a positive integer. Otherwise, it will be a periodic. Um, so that's basically what I prepare for the first meeting. Um, so any questions? You can type in the chat box and also you may um, unmute yourself to ask. I will upload the uh, recording of tutorial and the slides to the blackboard as well. So if you don't have question, that will be the end of today's tutorial. Thanks.